Do you load quilts onto a long arm frame like this one? If you do, I'm sure you've noticed that this one step can potentially be the longest, most annoying, and depending on the, the type of equipment that you use, potentially most painful part of the entire long arming process. Not to mention, it actually sets you up for success or failure to, when it comes to realign your quilt, depending on how good of a job you do on this one step. That's why there's multiple options available to you to help you load your quilts, but I found that they all have drawbacks. If you use a system that uses a dowel and some plastic clamps, those clamps are actually quite bulky and they can eat into your quiltable area. Not to mention, they're probably going to cause you some accuracy issues in that they're large and they can get twisted. So when you go to realign your quilt, it might not realign correctly. Pinning has long since been the gold standard, but if you're me, pinning usually involves stabbing, swearing, pain, and potentially bleeding on a client's quilt. Not to mention it is super slow. Switching back and forth between those two options is a possibility, but it is really slow and it really slows down the entire process. Hi, I'm Shelly and I'm a long arm quilter. Although you might know me better as Matant Quilting from Instagram and my website. And given that loading a quilt is such an important part of the entire process, I was desperate to find something that would work for me. And that's why I was so happy to find out about Sew Tights Magnums. These little doohickeys are super easy to use. <laughs> they are really fast. They're incredibly durable. I get amazing accuracy results. And best of all, there is no stabbing, no swearing, and no bleeding. <laughs> if you've never seen them before, let me show you a little bit about what they're about. Sew Tights Magnums are these really cool little doohickeys that consist of two pieces. First, they have a metal backing piece, which is smooth on one side and hatched on the other. And then we also have a four inch long yellow piece of plastic that has five very strong magnets on the back. When you put them together, they form an incredibly strong bond. And it's so, <laughs> it's so strong that I would not recommend that you try and pry them apart like this. Instead, I would recommend that you slide them apart. And this magnetic pin system has really helped me with my long arming. And I'm gonna show you in a minute how I use them to load up quilts and also some tips and tricks on things to avoid in order to get the best possible results. But before that, I wanna tell you a little story about how I came to know and love these magic little magnets. I met the ladies that run the Sew Tights business and I picked up 50 of the Sew Tights Magnums while I was at QuiltCon. And at that point, I legitimately just felt like, well, I have nothing to lose at this point. <laughs> and I thought that they might be a bit gimmicky. I was honestly very skeptical when I first got them because I thought, how good could they honestly be? So I brought them home after QuiltCon and I tried loading them on a quilt that just had regular cotton backing and they worked really well. They were fast and easy to use. And I thought, oh, well, that's good. Okay, <laughs> they were faster than I thought they were going to be. Then I tried them on a quilt that had minky backing because I thought maybe they wouldn't be strong enough to hold a minky backed quilt. And they worked great on minky backed quilts. And then I tried them on quilts that needed really precise realignment and they worked very well for that. <laughs> so now I am not going back. I have found the answer to all of my loading prayers and I'm going to be using Sew Tights Magnums for the foreseeable future. I can use them on every single quilt in my queue. I no longer have to switch back and forth between um, options. And they're so fast and they're so easy. So I'm going to show you how I use these in just a minute. But I do want to say upfront that everybody is different and everybody has different equipment. So there's a chance that, um, that I might show you something that won't exactly work for you, but I'm hopeful that you can find something here that will help you use these Sew Tights Magnums in your long arming practice, whether that's for clients or just for yourself. Okay, are you ready to see these in action? Let's do it. When I first got my Sew Tights Magnums, I thought that I would use them just like I had used pins in the past. So I would go around to the back of the machine and I would place my backing fabric so that it was laying on top of the leader. I would pin my backing fabric to the center mark in my leader and then I would place the backing piece of metal behind the leader 
then layer the leader on top of that, the fabric on top of that, and the magnet on top of that. And I would go along from the center outwards doing that until I had the entire edge of the quilt covered. The problem with attaching them as if they were pins is that when you come around to the front of the machine, you're going to see that the, it's actually bent. So this isn't very flat. And what the problem with this is that if you actually, if you actually put much tension on this, these magnets can actually pop off because this is not a very strong hold when the fabric is being folded like that. So if you over tightened your quilt, you could lose your so tight magnum like that. And so this approach won't work very well for minky or for any quilts really that need to be tight. So instead, let me show you what to do differently. So what you want to do is bring your take up leader to the front of your machine. For me, that involves rolling it out quite a bit and then bringing it forward and draping it on top of your belly bar. And for me, I always leave my backing leader draped over the top of the belly bar because it always just gives a little bit more um, friction and traction. So that'll hold it in place fairly well. What you want to do is make sure that the edge of your leader is kind of lined up with the top of the belly bar. And to hold it in place, I'm just going to put a magnum there, just the magnet part. I don't need the backing piece for that. And I'm going to pull this across and just hold it in place all the way down my machine. From there, I'm going to load the top of the backing fabric to the center of this leader. Let me show you how to do that. I've got my backing leader pulled out on top of my belly bar. I've got my sew tight magnums laid out. I've got my backing fabric and I've marked the center with a pin. I've just sort of laid it across the belly bar. Now I'm going to attach the top of the backing fabric to the center mark on my leader, just like normal. And now I'm going to attach the Sew Tights Magnums moving from the center outwards. So I'll start with one, I twist them apart, I place the metal backing with the cross hatching facing up underneath the leader, I hold it in place, place the fabric on top, I can feel where that is, and then I'm simply going to place the Sew Tight on top. I'll do another one. So I'll slide them apart, take the backing, place it underneath the leader, the canvas, then I'll lay the fabric on top, feel for that backing piece, and place the magnum right on top of that. I'll do one more. I find it really helps if you place the fabric sort of on top of the belly bar to start. And if you, if you want a hand to just hold it in place, all you have to do is just take the magnet part and it'll, that'll hold it in place. So I'll get another one <laughs> because I need that. Here's the metal backing piece. I place it underneath the leader and I'm doing this on top of the belly bar so I have a nice flat surface to work on. Feel for that backing piece. I know it's right there. I'm gonna place my fabric on top and do that. And then I'll continue doing it for the rest of the right hand side and also for the left hand side of the backing fabric. Okay, this method of going individually and placing the backing pieces underneath and then the fabric on top and then the magnet on top that's going to work well if you do not have a channel sewn or a casing sewn into your leader but personally i find this kind of clunky i find it a little bit slower than i want it to be and i'm i'm not very practiced at doing it this way instead let me show you a way that can be even faster if you look at my leader it's got a casing that is sewn into it, a channel. And that's how I was able to use the dowel and clamp system that I used when I was first starting out with my long arm journey. Now, if your leaders do not have casings sewn into them, I would recommend that you sew them in ASAP. 
It's not very hard to do. You can do it with your long arm. You don't need to take your leaders off. It's quick and easy. And there's tons of tutorials on YouTube that will show you how to do it. And why would you wanna bother? Because it is going to go so much faster when you use So Tight's Magnums with a channel. Let me show you how. With a channel, a casing, a tube, whatever you wanna call this sort of hollow tunnel of fabric inside your leader, you can actually put the backing pieces of your So Tight's Magnums inside that channel or that pocket. So now it's inside um, this casing, this little tube. And the benefit of putting them inside is that now you no longer have to try and hold the backing piece, piece in place, putting the fabric on just exactly right and then trying to also get your So Tight on top of that. I find that to be pretty fiddly. Instead, when you've got your backing pieces inside this channel, inside this casing, all you have to do is line up your fabric and then place your sew tight on top. Isn't that so much easier? <laughs> I think it's so much easier. When I was first trying out sew tights magnums, I wasn't sure if I was going to love them. So I simply placed the metal backing pieces inside the casing. And what I found though, when I did that, was that they would sort of float around inside this tube willy nilly. And if ever the casing got tipped, then all the metal pieces would actually fall out. So I found that a little bit frustrating. And also, after I used them for a bit, I learned how much I love them. And so I've decided to take our relationship to the next level and make it a little bit more permanent. And how I did that was that I actually sewed the backing pieces inside this leader. So all the way down, you'll see that there's metal backing pieces inside this leader. So here's how I did that. I sewed one seam at the center in the middle of my backing of my uh, leader. Then I placed a metal backing piece inside the tube. Then I sewed another seam six inches away. Then I placed another backing piece inside of this tube, sewed another, six, another line six inches away, and I did that for the entirety of the leader on both sides of the center. Now, why I chose six inches is because these magnets are four inches long. So that means, well, <laughs> They're quite strong. So that means that if the metal backing pieces were centered inside of their six inch pockets, then there would be approximately a two inch gap between the two magnets. A two inch gap is great. It'll hold really well. It won't waste any magnets. And you'll find the real benefit is that you can still slide around your metal backing pieces inside that pocket, which I'm going to tell you is going to be a benefit. And I'll show you why in just a minute. I'm gonna show you how I would load the, a backing fabric. I'm using here today some uh, Fireside. It's just a thicker fabric. It's quite like Minky. And I just wanted to show you using a thicker fabric. So I'm going to pin the center mark of my backing fabric, the top of my backing fabric. And I'm going to pin that to the center mark on my leader. Then I'm going to go out to the outer edge of the fabric and I'm just going to temporarily place a magnet on top of it just to kind of hold it in place so it doesn't all droop down doesn't fall on the ground. I'm going to do that on the left side as well. Again, it's just a temporary hold it in place. Easy peasy. Now I'm going to go back to the center and I'm actually going to realign. <laughs> I'm going to actually line this up. So the goal here is to have the top of the backing fabric line up with the seam line on my pocket. I'll take one so tight magnet and place it on top of the backing piece that I can feel inside of there. And I'm going to keep going down. Of course, with these types of fabrics, they tend to curl over on top. So it's a little bit trickier to line them up on the top, but it's quite easy to place these because the backing pieces are already in there. I don't have to fiddle around with them. So I'm going to place this like so. Then when I come to the edge of the quilt, it's really important that you have a magnet that overlaps the edge of the quilt. You wouldn't want to just leave a, a backing like that because you're going to find that it's going to pull. So what you wanna do is just make sure that your fabric is nice and flat and make sure that when you come to the edge, you're at least covering the edge with a magnet. I'm gonna take the, these, which are the remaining magnets that correspond to the backing pieces that are inside the rest of this pocket, and I'm going to put them off to the side. Now I'm gonna go back and do the left-hand side, and because those backing pieces are already in there, it's super fast and easy to load this way. So this was a real revelation to me <laughs> when someone told me that I should actually put them inside the pocket. I was like, oh my gosh, why didn't I think of that? And it's such a genius idea. It's so fast, it's so easy. And I'm never going to take these out because 
these work perfectly, these Sotites Magnums work perfectly with every type of quilt that I have to load. So again, um, the magnet is just, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm going to cover it. And I'm going to scoot this one over a little bit. So here, I'll have that one there. And this one is covering. So this one's actually covering two parts of a magnet, but at least it's covering the edge of my quilt, uh, the edge of my backing fabric. So again, I'm just gonna take these extra bits and then put them off to the side. Now that I've got the top of the backing fabric secured using my Sew Tights Magnums, I'm going to first <laughs> remove these little magnets that I had set up that were just holding this leader on top of the belly bar. So I don't need those anymore. And now I'm going to advance and I'm going to roll up this backing fabric onto my take up bar. I know that a lot of people tend to load their backing fabric, the bottom of their backing fabric first, but I don't do it that way. I do the top first and I'll show you why in just a minute. But one thing I wanted to mention is that my table and my frame does not have a leveler bar. If your frame does have a leveler bar, you might actually wanna sew these into your channel in the complete opposite way that I did. So I sewed in the metal pieces and then placed the magnets on top. And that's fine for me because there's no obstruction here. But if you had a leveler bar, you might want to sew your magnets inside of your channel and then place your metal pieces on top because those might flow underneath your leveler bar a little bit more smoothly. So let me go around the back and roll this up. I'm just gonna roll slowly. I'm gonna smooth my leaders as I go, just in case they get any wrinkles in them. and I'm going to smooth out my fabric as I go. Just rolling it out. Nice and easy, picking off thread as we go. That's what we do. And I'm going to just reach across and sort of make that. So nice and flat. So you can see that I've got some sagging going on here and that is normal. That happens with a lot of different fabrics. And that is why I like to load it on uh, for the top of the backing fabric first, because once I load it up this way, I'm going to roll it backwards and then it's going to end up on the, uh, the backing bar. And you'll, you'll see how that is going to get rid of some of that sagging or almost all of that sagging. I'm going to roll this up just until I can sort of see the end of the, the bottom of the backing fabric. Then I'm going to come around back in front of the machine I'm going to attach the back, the bottom of the backing using my Sew Tights Magnums. The first thing I'm going to do is just drop the backing fabric down. And you'll notice that this is my take up leader, or, or sorry, my backing fabric leader. This is, my, they call it your lining fabric. I've never heard that before. But I always have mine draped over my belly bar. And I do that by using these clamps that are on the very end of my, on the very end of my leader. And inside my leader, just at the very end, I've put this small wooden dowel. So it's just a small little round piece of wood. I've put it inside that pocket, just at the very edge. Then I use my clamps that came with the machine. I clamp it on top of that. And then that gives the, that gives the clamp something to hold on to. Then I'm going to tighten this up. And I want the top of my leader to be on top of my belly bar. So that looks pretty good to me. And from here, I'm going to attach this fabric to this leader. Now I'm going to attach the bottom of the backing fabric to the backing leader. I've got it laid on top of my belly bar. I'm going to pin the center of the fabric to the center mark on my leader. Then I'm going to, again, secure the outside, the very outside edges with one of my magnets, just sort of temporarily while I get it set up correctly. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Just kind of ish, laying it in the right spot, and placing a magnet down. I don't know why I always do the right side first, but again, I'm trying to line up the edge of the fabric with this stitching line that shows the pocket. Okay, I'm going to feel for the backing piece. I can, I can tell you that it's right there between those two. Do the next one. Oh, I like it when they, <laughs> I prefer it when they say the words, looking at me the right way. Okay, that's just the way my brain works. This is so easy and so fast. 
And same as for the top of the backing fabric, we want to make sure that the edge is secured with a magnet. So I'm just going to scooch that one down, lay it on top. There we go. I'm going to take these extras and move them off to the side because I don't need those. And I'm going to do the left hand side. So again, I'm just going to feel for that backing piece. And it's okay if your spacing isn't exactly the same between them. The magnets will work. What I think you can put them almost up to four inches apart is how far I've tested them. But I just feel a lot more comfortable when they're two inches apart. And then it feels like this one is quite a bit wider than the other one. That's okay. I'll just put one magnet here and then I'll put, I'll shift this one over. Okay, I'm going to take these extra ones and put them off to the side. Now that I've got the bottom of my backing fabric secured with my Sew Tights Magnums, you'll notice that the bulk of the backing is actually rolled up onto the take-up bar, but I really need it to be rolled up onto this backing bar in order to start quilting. So this might have seemed like a bit of a counterintuitive step and like maybe it adds an extra step in the process, but I'm telling you <laughs> that this little trick has yielded such great results and there's just something about when you roll it up once and then roll it back the second time that the backing fabric seems to settle out and I find that I have a lot less sagging. So you'll see that I've got some significant sag right here, but when I roll it back for the second time, it's going to be nice and tight and taut. So let me show you how that works. First thing I have to do is release this. Uh, <laughs> this leader is being held by these clamps, so I need to release this on both sides of the machine. And you'll notice when I let it go, it doesn't really, it doesn't really move because the magnets are holding it to this metal bar. So I'm going to come around and roll this fabric. So I learned this little tip from the Long Arm League, which is a community of long arm quilters where we receive monthly or actually weekly content in the form of either free pantographs or lessons or tips or tricks. And most of the things that I learned about long arm quilting, I actually learned inside the Long Arm League. And it is a wonderful place of community. We support each other and lift each other up. We are all about community rather than competition. And if that is something that sounds interesting to you as a long arm quilter, I would suggest you join us. You can learn more about that in, on my website or by following me on social media. But let me get back to this quilt here. So this is about where I would leave it if I was going, <laughs> dang, if I was going to be working on a quilt. And you'll see how nice and flat and even this is. And I want to show you that I haven't, I haven't really there. That's pretty tight. And you'll find that this is actually quite tight. When you tug on this, these magnets are going to hold very strong. So even though this is a thick backing, it's a fireside backing, it still holds really well with these magnets. And there's lots of things I like about them, but one of the things that I want to tell you that is the that I love the best is that because they're so low profile, they actually don't take up very much room of my quiltable area. So that's one of my favorite things. <laughs> and now from here, I would be ready to start quilting. I would, lay, I would lay my batting on top of this, and then I would lay my quilt top on top of that. Now I am a quilter who likes to float her quilt top, which means that I only use two bars of my machine and I do not attach the bottom of my quilt top in any way except I use clamps on the front on the front bar here. But if you are someone who uses three bars then you would simply load the bottom of the quilt top using the magnets exactly the same way as you did for the other two bars. Pretty easy right? The first question that most people ask me about Sew Tights Magnums is how many should I buy? And that's a really great question. And again, it's going to depend on the number of bars that you use. I have lots and lots of sew tights, but I use 20 sew tights per bar. So I've got 10 sew tights to the right of my center mark and 10 sew tights to the left. And that is true for every bar that I use. So uh, if you were going to buy some, I would recommend that you buy 20 per bar. So if you use two bars, I would recommend purchasing 40 of them. And if you use three bars, I would recommend 60. Now I have a 12 foot table and I've spaced them out so that there's about two inches of room between them. But if you had a larger table, like a 14 foot table, you could still get away with 20 of them per bar. You would just space them out a little bit further apart. 
And like I said, I've tested them out up to four inches apart, but I just feel really good that it's really strong on there when they're two inches apart. So I hope that answers your question about how many to buy. I've used my Sew Tights Magnums with just about every type of quilt that exists, and they have passed every test with flying colors. I especially like using them when I have really difficult to realign pantographs, you know, the kind that require real precision, like the pantograph that I used on this quilt here, my Scrap Stash Plus quilt. This pantograph is called Domestic Stitches Triangles, and it's beautiful, but it does require precise realignment at these points right here. I found that using my sew tights <laughs> gave me such a leg up in this precision realignment that I no longer dread it when a quilt asks for one of those really tricky pantographs. Can you tell that I love these things? <laughs> they are so easy to use. They're incredibly fast to load a quilt. I don't have to switch between other methods because the sew tights magnums work for every type of quilt that I have in my queue. And best of all, there's absolutely no poking, no swearing, and no bleeding on client quilts. If you want to pick up your own sew tights magnums, you can find them in your local quilt shop. If they don't have them, just ask them to get them in. Or you can find them online at sewtights.com. If you want to learn more about my long arming quilting journey or learn more about the long arm league or other tips and tricks about long arming, you can follow me on Instagram at Matant Quilting or on the internet at matantquilting.com. Thanks so much for watching and happy quilting.